Um, yeah, so my name is Anna Byrne. Um, I'm originally from Ireland and um, I washed up on the shores of Teesside about early 2016 um, with my partner, Liam Slevin. Um, and so we came over then in 2016 to kind of do a recce um, from Berlin where we were living. Um, and we kind of, I had some family here, but we kind of fell in love with the place, I suppose. Uh, Liam loved the Brutalist buildings, actually, the Dorman Tower, he just loved. Um, and it was a really beautiful day, actually. We took this massive big drive all out to Red Car and um, and then back to Seton Crew. And it was just it was just amazing. So we said we'd come over for six months. Um, and now we're still here. And um, now we run out of Middlesbrough. We run the auxiliary project space, um, which is like a big warehouse that has studios, has maybe between 15 and 20 artists and um, that have studios there and um, we have a gallery there and we have a performance space um, and we also I suppose the other thing that we do is we run the um, the Middlesbrough Art Weekender which started in 2017 and it's kind of like um, a town takeover of culture and arts and workshops and all the good stuff so yeah it absolutely is all the good stuff. Yeah, terrific. So, can you can you tell us about the how you first started off the the weekender and and how it's grown over the years? Yeah, so the Middlesbrough Art Weekender started off with uh, Liam and Paul Stewart initially. They had this idea to um, run some sort of festival. This was like in early twenty seventeen. Um, well, to run just events. So the first year, and I obviously elbowed my way in um, because the two lads were going to do it. And I was like, oh, I'd like to be involved. So we rolled up like an arts council bid and it was a really quick turn. It was quick turnaround and we got the answer. We, 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 we got it, but it was really, we had six weeks to get it all done and it was crazy. And we had all these brilliant volunteers, all these art students, um, and lots of people helping to like paint spaces and Liam and I went in a van to Ireland to pick up all this artwork and you know it was kind of that like we were just really running around doing every single job um terrified that we weren't going to pull it off but we somehow managed to um and it just really went down really well and it was just really um it just felt really exciting I suppose and we had just been here about a year at that point um, and we were working out of a house on Shaftesbury Street in Stockton um, which was kind of like a ramshackle um, house. I don't know were you ever there Lisa at the house in Stockton? No it was a little bit before I discovered you. Okay yeah so we that first that first art weekender we had artists staying with us that were just doing a separate residency but they were also then part of the festival and like it was just it was really exciting but it was like we were moving like sound systems from one event to another event because we just didn't have enough you know equipment for anything and everything was just um i don't know we were just like um it was it was all kind of hectic but in a really good way um, it was really, really exciting. Um, and then Liam is all about, I suppose, thing like he's really into transforming space, I suppose. So um, he found the warehouse that's on Station Street and he walked into it and he just thought like, this is a really, really good place to have the Art Weekender. Um, and I couldn't see it at all. I mean, it was just full of really, really old carpet and I don't know how many feet of dust it was just I, I I couldn't see it at all and so we spent quite a time clearing that and cleaning it and that's where the second art weekender um was based um and since then and then we and then we 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 took the the lease on it so since then we um we all we've we've run the art weekender from there um but it's just kind of grown, Lisa. I don't know. I think people are really, I, I suppose that's one of the really good things about um, Middlesbrough and Teesside that I find that people are very receptive and open. 
Um, I'm really welcoming and people just really seem to like this idea that the Art Weekender could work as um, an umbrella for lots of different events going on. Um, so I think that in that way, it's kind of just, it's, it's grown legs a little bit like that um, with people just really wanting to be involved and being so excited along with us, I suppose, and and also just being so welcoming of of um, the idea, um, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. It was. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you guys and all the work that you've done. Um, when I started doing this project, you know, in its original form for the Arts Weekender in uh, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um, it, it was a it was like um I had all these ideas and visions and I thought I was being visionary and um what I found in that interview project that pretty much everything that I thought of people were already doing and um and and the stuff you were doing was just like a prime example of that um the uh the the old art slabs one of the big things about them was that it was a 24 7 space and so I was thinking, you know, how, how do I do that? And my original idea was like you did basically to run it out of a terraced house to like find somewhere yeah. in Middlesbrough that I could rent, that I could just say whenever, you know, 24 hours a day, that's an open art space, come, you know, come and do whatever you want to do. And then I also started looking for warehouses, um, thinking, oh, you know, maybe you can get where. And then I found out about you guys and it was like, oh, my God. God, you know, somebody's already done this. You know, I mean, you're not called an art slab, but that's really, you know, everything you do is is so similar to um, what the original art slabs did. And so it was just incredible for me to think I don't have to find my own warehouse or hire a terrace house. I can just like take a studio in in, in be part of this um, much bigger thing that's already going on. Um, so exciting, and uh, and I think you're absolutely right. People here. Um, I mean, obviously you're always gonna have little fallings out or squabbles and, you know, there's always gonna be people that perhaps abuse a position of power, but for every scene that I've ever been in, you know, I find this the most welcoming and the most collaborative that I've ever worked with and the most inspiring. Here in Teesside. Yeah, yeah I, um, I, I'd, I'd probably agree, Lisa. Like, I, I definitely think that um, I don't know why I had this idea that when we moved here, or if we were doing things that it might be seen like, you know, the way I suppose you think about yourself as a bit of a blow in um, and are you kind of stepping on toes and things like that. And also, like you're saying that, you know, sometimes you, you come into a, a scene or you come into something and you might necessarily know everything that's happening. And are you replicating something that's already being done? And, you know, um, but yeah, I think that um and there's a really good scene here as well isn't there i mean there's so much going on um yeah i had i had no idea um six months ago um when i started this project absolutely no idea how much was going on that i had you know, i hadn't even an inkling about so much of it it's um it's just been such an eye-opener and i do you know i wonder I do wonder if you applied the same kind of model to other scenes, whether it be the same or not, you know, it'd be really interesting to see if other people wanted to sort of take on a vast, sprawling, 100 hour long, 200 people interview project and see what they've got going on in, in their worlds and all the things that they might un uncover. Um, because I think that that's one of the things quite a lot of people involved in the arts are, are, are happy just doing it in, you know, they're quite they're, they're insular and that's why their art's so good because they're yeah. so focused on it um that they don't necessarily ever connect yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah i yeah that that's really true um i suppose because i do a lot of work with um obviously with lean but me starting to work in the arts like that only started here in um in middlesbrough and um, before that I was always just writing and that's just something that I do on my, obviously on my own um, and a little bit of filmmaking, but this is the working with the auxiliary in the art weekender was a, was a really big shift. 
I suppose, in terms of that, because of the amount of people that you're working with or that you meet. Um, so, yeah, no, I get what you're saying about the about um, artists being insular or, you know, that that type of work that I suppose because a lot of it depends on your focus, doesn't it? You know, artists just getting to, like, get the work done, because I suppose that's the most important part. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've kind of touched on one of my questions there about, you know, how, how it all began and how you got into all this. Like, did you come from a creative background? What what was kind of like your your launch pad into the, the arts? Well, um, OK, so well, I was always right. I was always writing um, from when and, and loving stories and everything like that. So I was always doing that. And then I studied film um, I did a little bit of traveling after I left school. And then I studied film in Galway in Ireland. Um, and from there I moved to Cork and I left college, obviously, just when the massive recession was hitting around 2009, 2010, I think that was. Um, or maybe, I don't know, sorry, 2008. And then I met Liam in Cork. I was working in a theater there um, and he was running a, a space there as well um, on the South Mall with a few friends. They had um, they had um, Cork Contemporary Collective, I think was the name of them. So we kind of met up and we were kind of like, everybody was, there was a mass exodus from Ireland as there like, you know, usually is in Ireland every like, you know, few decades, everybody leaves. So everybody was leaving and the unemployment rate was quite high and Liam and I, we're trying to think of somewhere to move that wasn't going to be like a huge um you know we wouldn't have to get a visa or we wouldn't have to do kind of anything that was too labor intensive so we moved to berlin um and that's then berlin was really really good i think for both of us um, and me in particular because i got to spend a lot more time writing and also i had a more of an outside perspective on what i was writing about which was primarily Ireland um, and Liam um, got to just experiment with lots of different like with a couple of different spaces there and running loads of events and because it's like you know I suppose somewhere like Berlin is like somewhere like London or somewhere like New York you're just going to have so many people there wanting to just you know do gigs or do whatever so he really got into his sound art there um, and he got to kind of refine it a bit more because he got to do lots of gigs um and then because it definitely was like i mean it, it was just cheaper to live there as well than it happened in ireland so we worked less we were able to do artist residencies and we were really kind of then uh looking at running some sort of an artist residency um and we kind of started realizing as we looked at different places in berlin that we'd really missed I don't want to say miss the boat in Berlin, but it was just, it was getting more, you know, it was getting more and more expensive as, you know, that just happens as a place becomes popular. So things were getting more expensive. We didn't speak the language well enough. And um, we just thought it's not, it's not really, it's not really working here. And it's something that we really wanted to do. And I have some family um, here on Teesside. So, um, my brother said, why don't you come over and have a have a look around to see what you think, see if you like it. And like I said to you at the beginning, um, yeah, we came over and we really liked it. And um, things just really fell into fell into place. Um, so that's my rambling. <laughs> answer. Yeah. No, that, was, that was great. It's really interesting. It's like. Um um like Trevor Teasdale who I must I haven't interviewed yet is like he's not very zoomy so we've got to work out how we're going to do it um but you know he was part of like the original arts lab in Coventry and sort of there when all the two-tone thing happened and it completely erupted and that's how he felt that's how he ended up here um it just got kind of big and unwieldy and he would much rather be somewhere where he's sort of originating stuff and where it, the scene's emerging and so that that's kind of um you know berlin as you say london manchester all these places in fact i was interviewing somebody um the other day um stella hall from the festival of Flint. oh yeah 
very much involved in Manchester in the early days, you know, right, sat around okay. the table, Tony Wilson and all those people before anything had happened, you know, uh, sort of at the, at the start of the factory and Hacienda and all of that. So, you know, she's done that scene building uh, thing before. Yeah. And so it, that she, you know, she's one of the many people that we have here in Teesside um, making it happen here. And you know what, my only concern is that it's like, um stuff becoming too established and the gentrification and the you know the rent hikes and everything that goes with um creating a scene you know be, becoming a place to be so i i think we just got to kind of think how we how we balance yeah. that yeah and i think um do you know actually where you probably know this anyway or what something that we saw we 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 started going to um we did a residency in Detroit, in Hamtramck, actually, in Detroit, uh, a good few years back. I don't know, 2014, maybe was the first time we went over. We just made friends with the couple that were running the residency. And we were like, oh, Janie, isn't this, you know, this is the kind of residency we'd love to run. Um, but the reason they seem to be able to, they seem to have a different kind of model for um, the arts scene that they're creating there because because the whole city went bankrupt, I suppose, artists were able to buy buildings and buy houses really, really cheaply. And that seems to be one of the differences that they're buying, the artists, they're actually buying up land there. Um, so they own it then. So it's more difficult, I suppose, to be pushed out, isn't it? Mm, brilliant, yeah, I really like that. Um, I was talking to some people uh, they were there based in Bristol, so you know they're fucked basically. Um, but that idea of um, how how to make something permanent, you know, can we actually get in there and buy stuff to future proof ourselves against the oncoming storm of gentrification? I, I think that's it. I think you know, and you see it happen because you know, in a way, I think is it inevitable? And it's not, you have to change the model. It's not that it's you know, it's just the, the model is it, you see it so much, like I mean. Temple Bar in Dublin. Have you ever been to Temple Bar? It's like the tourist hotspot now in Dublin. It's kind of all, it's, you know, eight pound points, that kind of thing. But before, like, um, you know, in the 70s, 80s, it was like the artist place because it was really cheap, it was really run down. All the artists moved in, made it kind of, you know, cool. And developers moved in and made it into, you know, tourist central, nobody can afford to live there. Um, and there's just so many examples of that. I mean, we just keep hearing stories now of, um, well, sure, look, Berlin is just like, you know, I suppose it's just, everything is just changing there. All the squats are closing down. Um, you know, everything's just being like done up. And I suppose part of it is, I don't know, what is it? Is it capitalism? Is it just the world we live in? I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know. When property prices start rising, there's people that are very good at um, making money. That's all they do. It's about making it's money, yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, let's let's see how much see, see how much we can buy. That sounds a way to go. We'll become landlords of ourselves. That sounds terrific to me. Um, so I guess I'd better ask you about um, how lockdown has, not, not that I don't know, how lockdown affected uh, your work and... Um, what you've been able to do and this or just playing it by ear for now? Um, so, as you know, Lisa, we have some amazing studio holders. So they have made lockdown um, quite nice for us in terms of we've been able to keep the space open. Um, our studio holders are just so active and they have, it just feels like a really, really good community in the auxiliary, really, to be fair. Um, I spent a lot of time in Ireland um, because my mom was so ill. So it was great knowing that there was this, you know, that we had our community still going in the auxiliary and the space really seems to have thrived in some ways, I feel, um, with, with lockdown. There's been more time to think about how we would like to run the space or how we can run it more collaboratively, how studio holders can be more involved in the space. Um, on the other side of it as well, we've been able to just work more regionally with all the talent that is in the area. 
so that's been really good with like there's been more of our our, our focus has shifted onto that um so that's been really really good as well so um i think it's been quite it's mostly positive i mean like nothing can well i don't know because i know you're running you're running events um really successfully online um we we've done like a digital gallery but we haven't really we've we haven't done so much digitally um i don't think we've moved more into like kind of some professional development for artists and more just trying to giving out like small pots of money um but it, it feels um and i'm aware that it's not a positive time for a lot of people but um it feels somewhat positive to me because of the time to kind of stop and think um and that that's like allowed now because everybody has to stop um so yeah i've realized how much work i can actually get done uh, you know i'm i'm totally rethinking loads of things lisa it's great i'm thinking do i only need to do can i get away with like a three-day week a four-day week long days spend more time with my little boy um yeah like a lot of different ways of working um have come out of it and so yeah mostly positive i think brilliant yeah it's been obviously with this project it's just coming up to the six month mark so you know when the first interviews sort of in july people were like they were really everyone seemed really 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 pleased at the time to kick back and relax and think about their artistic practice but then, you know, kind of by now people are so ready to go out there and, and I think people have had enough thinking time now. Yeah, um, I, I, might... yeah I think it's really, I don't, that's right, like I, I don't, like I, I, I think Zoom and everything has been brilliant, but like what is the substitute really for like, you know, being around people and having those things that happen kind of spontaneously when you're in a room with people and who you might yeah. speak to and just the feeling of that as well and I know that you know all of these things go away to kind of you know to, to help with that but I, I don't yeah there isn't really a substitute to that although there's I mean so many organizations doing brilliant things like the art packs like I'm part of Writers Block Northeast you know Laura and James, yeah Laura and James are running that and their workshops I have one tomorrow they're just brilliant like I just you could it's six hours um and it just flies by they're just um the energy that they have in person really really comes across so um yeah like I think people are are really kind of um I think it's really it's difficult because we thought we were there at the end didn't we just before Christmas everybody was like oh you know we're over the hump and yeah big shock to everybody that no actually we're back in the thick of it again yeah I'd have to say I mean like yeah I have been running the Red Room online and I've done you know some brilliant brilliant um online events and all you know it does almost feel like it's we're doing it in the actual person but um definitely doing the radio shows live and direct from the auxiliary with my guests in the studio was a massive massive highlight of last year for me and I think for quite a few of the guests that came along it was kind of one of the few times where you would gather you know there's only five of us um but still that's enough to really spark something you know yeah. and uh so yeah I, I i'm i'm really like i'm well ready to get out there again now but um this is this is where we are um anna it's been absolute pleasure to talk to you I'm just absolute delight i'm i'm just um i'm just so grateful to you and liam and all that you've done um I, I, I certainly don't feel like I'd be, be where I am today if it wasn't for that. Um, and, um, and I'm just so excited about the future that, that there is to come and all, all the things that, that will emanate out of um, the auxiliary and the art weekend. Thanks, Lisa. And it's so, you know, I'm, I'm obviously awfully taking compliments. Thank you. That is, that's so, not, but you know, I think Liam and I feel like we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everybody that is involved. You know, you can't, it's not a one way, thing so um i really i really feel like that you know anything that we're doing it doesn't mean anything if people don't sh show up or they don't buy into it um and um, so like yeah like i was saying we've had so much support um since we moved here that it feels you know we feel like we really looked out 
Um, so thank you also. Brilliant. See, this is, this, you know, this why so it's just really nice to be in a scene where everyone's just like <laughs> really supportive and grateful. And, you know, and not like, oh, you, you've you got that attention and that, that. No, I no. I mean, no, there's, there's, more there's, yeah, yeah, there's loads of just, attention to go around, you know. Exactly. And I think the more that there comes, the more that there comes, you know, it's like. Definitely, um, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes, I totally agree. We should all be bigging each other up and saying how great, you know, and shouting about each other um, all the time. Sure, that's just what makes, you know. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I will let you get back to your Friday night and um, I can't wait to see you in, in the actual person. Yes, it definitely, Lisa. OK, look, mind yourself. Thanks a million. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.